Markets. Our Sivakumar, head fixed income and access mutual fund joins. And Sivakumar, hi, morning, and thanks for patiently waiting by. We were just running Helter Skelter in the show today. Uh, you know, like Mike Lee was highlighting, yields firm to a two year high. Your view on what is causing the hardening of the yield, besides, of course, high inflationary expectations? I think we have had a perfect storm of uh, negative news for bond markets over the last few months. Of course, the inflation has been one underpinning that and the global rise in yields, commodity prices. But I think the driving force really has been the fiscal slippage and the fact that the market is now very uncertain as to how uh, uh, the government is going to complete its market borrowing program. I mean, uh, uh, given also the backdrop in which the RBI has been advising banks to reduce their interest rate risk, uh, who is going to buy? Uh, 10 lakh crores of issuance by the central and states next year. And that's really uh, uh, the key reason, I think, why markets have been under tremendous pressure. So there is both the macro uh, inflation worries and uh, the, uh, the, the concerns uh, about the stance of the FISC and the supply demand. Right. So uh, what, according to you, or rather how much of the recent yield hardening you think is led uh, by tighter liquidity conditions? And also liquidity is expected to tighten much more from here onwards up until March. How do you see that impacting the short-term rates and the 10-year yield? And do you think the situation is going to only worsen from here onwards? I think uh, you're right. Liquidity has been a contributing factor. Uh, but uh, on the uh, on the flip side, we must remember that about one lakh crores of market stabilization bills are due for maturity in March. So there's actually going to be a surge of liquidity coming back into the system uh, from here to end of March. And then, of course, the government, which is today sitting on a large cash balance with the RBI, is also likely to spend in the new financial year. So I think when you look at it from a three to six month perspective, our own view is that liquidity will come back uh, into the system. Uh, the one factor which is probably going to keep a liquidity draining out, uh, or I should say two factors, one is the ongoing uh, increase in the currency in circulation and the other is uh, that the FIs have been, have been selling in, especially in equities and therefore the balance of payments uh, on a monthly basis, you may see a drawdown in uh, reserves which itself leads to some tightening liquidity. So I think uh, on balance we should see liquidity actually getting better over the next couple of months and that should provide relief for the money market and short term bonds. Uh, this is not going to directly be a positive impact for long, long bonds, especially the government securities. Um, hi there, uh, Sivakumar Avan joining in. Um, what's the expectation now from the RBI in terms of liquidity management? As you said, you're not worried about the flows now, but while the RBI did say that they will be using a lot of tools to help manage liquidity, did a lack of OMO announcements disappoint? And what is your expectation as to what moves we can see from the RBI now? Yeah, I think uh, that's a very good question. And we have seen last year when there was a surge of uh, build-up in reserves, the RBI sterilized that build-up in reserves through OMO sales of securities. And more recently, we have seen reserves drop. And RBI may choose to do open market purchases uh, uh, rather than sales. That is to say, they, to buy bonds in the market to infuse some liquidity. And that could provide much needed support for the bond market. I think last year, the fact that you had a higher deficit and on top of that, the RBI is selling long-term bonds into the market certainly pressured uh, the yields in the second half of the financial year uh, up to now. And I think if the RBI sends a signal that they are going to use OMOs to support the market, uh, in a sense to address uh, liquidity, uh, markets will take a lot of heart from that. Uh, that's one, I think, trigger that we could see from the RBI in the next few weeks. Okay. But what's the sense when it comes to the trajectory of bond yields now, given the kind of move that we've witnessed already? Do you think bond yields have peaked out? And what are the factors that you will watch out for from here on, be it on the domestic or even the global front? Well, I think most of the factors are going to be domestic. I, and from my own perspective, uh, to be honest, we didn't see the blowout to 780 uh, happen. And, and I think... Uh, uh, Bond yields are
fairly priced relative to inflation. I mean, inflation is at 5% and your 10 year is close to 8%. I think if this is absolutely uh, reasonably priced, uh, but the market is more concerned right now about the supply and demand situation. Uh, and we must remember that in this period, in February and March, when there are no central government securities up for auction, we are seeing this kind of pressure. So what happens when the new financial year starts and you get you know, 20 or 30,000 crores per week of G6 supply uh, hitting the market? And I think that's what the markets are really worried about. So it's, if the RBI were to do something to address the market concerns on this, then I think there will be value buyers. I mean, I think eight, close to 8% is uh, is really interesting in terms of uh, 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 from a buying perspective we also need to remember that if rbi genuinely cares about the 4% inflation target and actually achieves it over the next 1 to 2 years then we are talking about 4% real yields on the 10 year which is fantastic levels if you were to look at a look at it from a buying perspective Before we let you go, what is the advice now that you have to fixed income investors? Would you prefer short end or long end of the curve and what's the rationale? I think uh, uh, the short end significantly likely to outperform compared to the long end. And the reasons for this are twofold. One, while the long end looks fairly valued, I don't see too many triggers for a sharp pullback in yields which will may help us make money there. And the short end of the curve, clearly, uh, where market worries on RBI rate hikes and uh, tight liquidity are perhaps a little overdone. And as liquidity comes back, that's a segment which we expect to see yields drop. Uh, so that's a segment which we really like. Uh, investors, I think, are not going to get compensated for higher duration yields, uh, higher duration through yields. Uh, the yield curve, if you see, from uh, overnight to five years is reasonably steep, but after five years is quite flat, which suggests that there is no real benefit to running long duration. So stay short, stay in corporate bonds, which are still outperforming related to government securities. I think that's, that's what our portfolios are positioned for, and that's what we would recommend to investors. All right, advice team noted. Thanks so much for giving us your views and expert opinion. And thank you so much.